this is Chris with Phoenix Gaming. Today we're going to talk about Orc War Bosses. We're going to look at each War Boss, their strengths, weaknesses, uh, you know, just kind of talk about whether or not they're worth their points. And then we'll talk about which ones are the biggest winners and which ones are the biggest losers of this edition, or at least of the index. And uh, we're not going to talk about them in any particular order. Generally, they're going to be in the order they appear on the index, and then we'll kind of talk about the best and then the worst. First, we're going to talk about the Beast Boss. Uh, he is the Beast Naga War Boss on foot. He does have a 5-up invuln inherently. He didn't lose that. So he also gained the Beast Naga 6-up Feel No Pain. So that's a really good move for him in increasing his durability. He gains some devastating wounds on the charge, which just means if you get a critical wound, he does some mortal wounds with his weapons. And then some of his weapons will have like anti-beast, anti or anti-vehicle anti-monster so you can punch straight through against those bigger targets with it with snag is getting re-rolls into vehicles and monsters his plus one to hit is now actually relevant when you send them into the targets they're supposed to go into and you can use him to just kind of crush your opponent through weight of dice and you know he did lose a pip of toughness and a wound and that feels kind of weird most of the orc characters either lost toughness lost a wound or lost both and then his melee lost some ap regardless of which weapon you pick, which again was was kind of a disappointment, but is kind of standard fare for a lot of the melee weapons in the game. They've all been kind of brought down or toned down a little bit. I feel like ultimately he's maybe side grade, slight upgrade. He's a great choice for a big unit of beast snaggas because you can, you know, really get those dice more efficient when they slam into something a good example was playing a buddy and he brought three ddas and i charged one of them with 10 b snaggas sorry 10 b snaggas and a war boss and just because of re-rolls and being able to one cp fives explode instead of sixes i just got him through weight of dice like it killed the dda simply through weight of dice and it, it's kind of neat to see orcs interact in that way because they haven't really done a good job of that, and the war bosses can definitely help that. Next, we're going to talk about the beast boss on Squigasaur. It did go up to T10, which does help him become surprisingly durable. You know, chainswords are wounding him on sixes, things like that. He did retain his character in Vuln, and he gained a four plus feel no pain as opposed to his reducing damage so it does allow him to soak a little bit more than expected if you've got some good dice he'll stay on the table longer than he should and even though he's got some low strength attacks he's got anti-vehicle and monster on his normal swings and he gives the old here we go unit to all snag a keyword units within six inches so they can re-roll charges so it does kind of bring back some of that again Feels bad that core rules are being taken away and then put as auras, but it is a solid unit that's relatively cheap at 165 points, and he is a character, so he can get enhancements. Follow Me gives him an extra 2 inches of movement. The Kill Chopper gives him devastating wounds that can stack with his anti-vehicle and anti-monster. So, again, a very good choice. Uh, he can intervene for a single command point, even if you've already heroically intervened this turn. So there's a lot of ways to kind of get him into combat also. The downsides are that it doesn't have the lone operative unit or ability, and it cannot go into units. So he's a big target for any kind of enemy shooting. You know, you're going to have to be a little bit more technical and play him. He does make a great distraction card effect, so you can kind of throw him out there. And because he's uh, he's fairly cheap... You could kind of put him out there and hope that he soaks some of the shooting to give your other units a chance to get forward and get where they need to be. It becomes a six of one, half dozen of the other. Do I shoot at this beast boss on Squigasaur that could really wreak some havoc? Or do I shoot at the smaller units that are moving towards objectives and things of that nature? So uh, it, it, to me, that's the role it's going to fill is a very good, cheap distraction Carnifex type unit. The Death Killer War Trike is a very interesting unit, mostly because I'm pretty sure that Games Workshop has some massive typos on its data sheet. It is fast and can attach to bikes. It finally does something. It is just a generic plus one to hit, but that is better than the nothing that it did before, right? And it does give the unit auto advance six inches. So when you declare your Y, you could get 18 inches with him and his unit. So that's, that's a pretty solid chunk of ground you're gaining. Uh, melee did go up to strength 10, which will be strength 11 when you declare, which is, again, 
really good considering the rest of our melee kind of got brought down in strength. Like power claws went from 10 to 9. Uh, but kill saws did go to 12. And I don't know. It, it, the, all of our melee profiles are kind of weird. But his is pretty good. And he did lose vehicle and became mounted, which to me is a very good thing. Because there's so much anti-vehicle in the game that I've seen, or at least a lot of armies have access to it, that it, it kind of gives him a measure of protection that he just didn't have before. Now, he does have some downsides. He doesn't have the character keyword, although I'm, I, I do think this is a typo or some sort of mistake, because he does have the war boss keyword, and he's just always been a character, so I find it hard to believe that he can attach to a unit, has the war boss keyword, and is not a character. Uh, his kill a jet lost assault and his guns are still pretty ass. They don't really do much. Like you have a single shot melta. So his shooting still just going to be underwhelming, but at 90 points, he can make a unit of six bikes a lot faster and give them plus one to hit to make them a lot more scary in melee. And like I said, just, if you're going to take him to an event, talk to your TO before giving him enhancements because he's historically been a character and I believe rules is intended. He's a character, but you and your TOs need to be on your same page before you do anything with him like that. Gaz, uh, you know, personally, I'm not a fan. I feel like his data sheet's underwhelming. Again, he was on the faction focus, so I'm not going to dive super deep into what he does and doesn't do. He's down to T6 from T7. He's one of the only things I've seen in this whole edition that actually lost toughness. Uh, and, and he only goes in Mega Knobs. He gives him plus one to hit and plus one to wound, which is really good. And if Makari's in the unit, he's got a 12-inch aura of lethal hits, which again is, is very good. Don't get me wrong. It's not a terrible data sheet, but being infantry doesn't really benefit him much because he's got a massive base. He's really tall and big, so he can't really hide very well anyway. Uh, he's going to struggle to get holy within un or ruins unless they've got a pretty big footprint. And at 230 points, I just feel like he's overpointed. If he drops 15 to 20 points, there's probably some utility there. The problem is that he's competing with big mechs and mega armor for a slot with mega knobs and the big mechs and mega armor to me just add more to that unit than he does and you, and again you may disagree you may think that gas is awesome and that's fine uh i just am not a fan based on the way i like to play captain badruck uh pros he he gives full hit rerolls uh to flash gets with their shooting attacks He's still cheap, and the flash kits are cheaper. He gained a 6-inch minus 1 toughness aura, which is very good, uh, especially because all of your flash kits now have choppers. And then he's got 6 wounds. So again, like I don't know why he's got 6 wounds, but he's got 6 wounds. Everything else went down in toughness and wounds, and he's just like sitting here with 6. So probably because he has a name, and for whatever reason, GW wants us to run name characters this edition. Kanzi, he honestly doesn't really have any. He's one of the standout characters in our book right now, or our index. Uh, Flash Skits and Badruk, to me, are a staple in the army. I wouldn't be surprised if most competitive lists have a unit of 10 with him. They may not. Uh, but they are, right now, Gits are sitting at an incredible 19 points a model. Uh, and when you think about the fact that at the beginning of 9th, they were sitting at, I think, 32. And really in 8th, they sat at like 25 to 30, most of that edition. And they really haven't changed much from 8th to 9th to 10th. So the fact that they just keep getting cheaper. Like right now, you can run Badrek and 10 Flash Gits for cheaper than running 10 Flash Gits by themselves when you start at 9th edition. So to me, like I said, he's a standout. He's very good. His guns are solid. The rerolls are solid. Uh, you know, you can get once per game lethal hits. Their guns have sustained hits. And if you've got 10 of them, you can throw 40 dice if you're shooting at the nearest unit. So it's one of those where just through, again, orc math, they will do a lot of damage. Mazrog Scarbad, Scragbad, I don't know, Scarbad, whatever his name is, this guy, the big white squig. Uh, he also went from you know, T7 to T10. He's got the four plus feel no pain. So he has a beast boss on Squigasaur. He's bonus damage to vehicles and monsters and even more to Titanic. He does critical wounds on a five if he charges, which just means if you have dev wounds, it'll trigger on a five, etc. 
uh, and your fives will auto wound. And really, at 195 points, if you grab him and three other regular Squigasaurs, it's still well under 800 points, right? Because each one's under 200, and you got four models. And it offers a lot of durability and some pretty solid damage output. As a, I, I'm not a big fan of spam, but like this is a solid unit that that could get spammed and be kind of tough to deal with because of their perceived resilience like the four plus feel no pain is going to feel real good until it doesn't right uh the cons i mean he again it's still got to get there and you're relying on data sheet durability with no screening or loan operative rules so there's going to be certain things that are just going to uh, delete him you know as of right now wraith knights are just going to delete him through like excess mortal wounds and all the other stuff that's going on any inherent issue with the game right now is going to make him disappear very quickly but I do see him and Squigasaurs in general just being in a lot of comp lists because of their potential durability and their ability to play distraction card effects. So, again, very, very solid unit with some utility. The regular war boss, this guy gets plus four attacks on the WOG, and that's in addition to getting his normal plus one on the WOG. So that'll give him a meaty nine attacks with his power claw when you declare. Like, that is a lot. Uh, his movement's up to six, like all the orc infantry is, and he's really super cheap at 70 points. He can go into knobs and make them terrifying with the plus one to hit. Like, if you've got 10 knobs with power claws and him, and they just get out of a truck and they just get there, he's a good candidate for follow me in that situation because your unit's now moving eight inches. And if you've got him in the truck, you can cheese that three inches of movement for your disembark. So you're getting 11 inches plus your advance. So it's one of those where. You could get him there. Or if you start with him on the table with the knobs, you could give him follow me, and then you can ear we go him to give him plus two onto his advance. And then still, like, there's a lot of options there. And, you know, like I said, when you've got power claws on those knobs, it's, what, 30 attacks, which is 40 on the wall, if I remember right. So you're looking at a lot of dice that it will be at strength 10, neg 2, 2 damage in the fight phase. So it's it's nothing to blow off. Like, it is very good. The cons, his AP and strength went down on the claw. Like I said, it's it's weak. It's like strength 9 or 10 base. I forget if it's 9 or 10. The knobs are 9. He might be 10 base. Uh, and really, I understand why the AP went down, but the strength going down feels weird. Uh, and he only goes into boys or knobs. So there's not a lot of options there. And neither one is a bad option. But... I feel like he's a very standout character. He's super cheap. And if you put him into a unit of boys with a pain boy, because boys have a special rule that allow two characters to attach as long as one of them is a war boss. Uh, it's a very resilient and efficient battle line unit. And if you want, you can add a weird boy instead. And then you can jump them and still get like, here we go to give him plus two to charge. So you can have a seven inch charge coming off of a deep strike effectively. So again, there's a lot of good things that the war boss can do. And... None of the options for enhancements are bad. Like I said, follow me is very good. Cunning but brutal lets you fall back and shoot and charge, which is also very good. You know, so there's there's just a lot of great unit, great utility, super cheap. War boss and mega armor, uh, you know, pros. It's a great looking model, man. <laughs> like <laughs> that's about it. I will say it's one of the few, again, one of the few units whose strength went up in melee. He's strength 12 now, base. And then, uh, you know, you look at the cons, though, and it's like, oh, okay. Less attacks in melee, less AP in melee. At 95 points, there's no reason for me to take him. He doesn't do anything to make him feel cool or special. So when I'm looking at my Mega Knobs and I'm looking at what character to attach to him, I just keep looking at the Big Mac and Mega Armor and going, this is just a better pick. The Big Mac and Mega Armor gives him a 4-plus invulnerable save, and you can just put a Big Mac back in the unit every turn. So if, if one dies, I can put one back. So he can at least pay for himself, right? If he's a if he's 100 points and I bring three Mega Knobs back throughout the course of the game, he's paid for himself. Whereas, like, the War Boss just doesn't do anything. Plus one to hit isn't bad, but it's not really good either. So... Uh, and, and I'm guessing, man, maybe they just hit their sales quota because he's in the start collecting or the combat patrol box. Uh, his data sheet's just kind of lackluster and overpointed. If he dropped a lot, like if he was about the same price as a regular war boss, I feel like I'd still be hard pressed to pick him over the Big Mech. Boss, Nickrot, 
He does give his attached unit cover, so commandos are just going to always be in cover while he's in it, which is super cool. Infiltrators is good. He's got stealth, so he's minus one to hit against ranged attacks. Uh, and being able to be pulled off the board and put back on once per game is a great ability for kind of like being sneaky and getting some extra points here and there. Uh, and he's, you know, the only boss that can go into commandos, so it's a good thing to have him and put him in there. The cons are that he's the only boss that can go in commandos, so if you want a boss in commandos, it has to be him. He's a little pricey at 105 points, especially because he's a specialized unit. If he could go in regular boys at 105, I could get behind it. Or if he could go in knobs at 105, I could get behind it. But the fact that he can only go in commandos, I feel like should give him a discount. When you have such a hyper-specialized unit that can only go in a hyper-specialized unit, I feel like that character needs to be a little cheaper to reflect that. Uh, taking away the bonus cover save kind of means that they're going to have a four up base save at best which uh with the way ap seems to have been reduced is fine but when you think about all the mortal wounds that exist it's not going to matter anyway anybody that's going to shoot at them for the most part is going to be able to just devastating wounds them off the table so it's not going to be a huge huge issue uh overall i think he's a solid side grade if he drops five to ten points i think you see him with commandos a bit more often but right now i think at 105 points he's just a little bit too expensive for what he does considering he's so restricted and where he can go boss zagstruck he gives storm boys the old ear we go so they can reroll their charges out of deep strike uh and he you know gives you a plus one to hit in melee that is the standard orc bonus the downside is that his 5-up feel no pain became a 6-up feel no pain, and there's not really anything impressive about him. He can go into a unit of Storm Boys. There are some utility there. He will work with specific builds. I feel like he's like a side grade, maybe a slight upgrade over the ninth data sheet, but there's nothing there that really stands out to me outside of the fact that he gives a reroll to a charge. There's going to be some builds that can use him. I just haven't looked at how I would yet. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end our list with the war boss on the bike, and I'm not really sure where to begin. This data sheet's kind of a mess, and again, a lot of the orc stuff is, but he has a character keyword and he has the leader keyword. The data sheet doesn't tell you what units he can attach to, so rules is written. He actually can't go into any units, so it's it's not the same situation, but it's a very similar situation to the death killer war trike. Overall, he's a solid unit. You can give him a kill saw. Uh, and he does give out a plus one to hit, which again, just like the war trike is better than the nothing that he did before. Uh, I assume that he's either going to be able to attach to bikes or knobs on bikes. It may be limited to one, but I think it might be one or the other. We'll see if you can put him in knobs. You put, you give the knobs kill saws, you put them in there for the plus one to hit, you give them follow me. And then they've got a 20 inch threat range. And that's a very hard hitting unit with a lot of speed and it's one that your opponent will have to respect and the other thing to keep in mind is that like because they have assault weapons they're eligible to shoot if they advance which opens them up to being able to do things like the uh teleport homers and stuff like that so it's kind of a cool way to increase their utility uh overall like i think it's a good unit uh i also know that it went to the legends list and then it got the imperial armor data sheet so once again there's just so much in the air about this unit. And until an organizer tells me I can't run it, I'm going to run it. And until an organizer tells me I can't run it with bikers or knobs, I'm going to run it with knobs. Uh, because I think that's a, a legal move right now, right? I think that's a fair assumption. He can go in one or the other. The biggest winners, in my opinion, are the regular war boss. He gets so many attacks and being able to double up characters with a unit of boys makes boys really good makes him really good and just you know you, you can create a lot of really cool builds with multiple war bosses and boys you can you know boy weird boy to jump here we go you can boy pain boy feel no pain big resiliency you can boy unit wa uh, knob with war banner and basically get two was every game with one unit of boys so again like he's just so good the only downside is that it can only go in boys and knobs, but at 70 points, I could see running three 10-man boys units, running three war bosses, and just putting all three in trucks and just having a very mobile, very dangerous battle line unit, being able to just bounce all over the place, putting him in with a unit of knobs with 
with uh, Power Claws or even Big Choppas. I'm not a fan of the new Big Choppa profile, but I could see it being very good. You know, just through, again, weight of dice. And then, like I said, Captain Badrick, he is just a winner by proximity. Because Flash Gits got really cheap, he makes them extremely efficient by Orc standards. And I, before we move on, I wanted to point out, I've had a couple of conversations with people. Uh, I try not to talk to people too much about competitive 40K, like in Discord and in... I, I definitely don't get on Reddit. Because... No matter what I say or how I talk, everybody just always knows more than me. Uh, and I'm just not going to, I'm not going to waste my time arguing with people. You know, I got into a discussion with a group on Discord and this dude was like, you're crazy. Flash kits are terrible. And I was like, bro, what are you talking about? Regular knobs right now are 23 points. Flash kits are 19 points, and they all have choppas. So they're basically a base loadout knob with a very good gun. Like, these things are really good. And when I, I mean, I will admit, to his credit, when I explained it to him, he was like, oh, shit, I didn't even notice that. Like, you're right. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, they have a really good melee profile. They're strength 5, neg 1, 1 damage. They're like 3 or 4 attacks. Uh, Badruck has a minus 1 toughness aura. So, you know, like... You're wounding Marines on twos if you declare your Wa and get a charge with them. So there's a lot of good things going on there. And they're just, to me, like an auto-include in any competitive list because of the dice that they can put out. And I will do a video on those by themselves. The biggest losers, uh, the War Boss of Mega Armor, like I said, he's lost attacks and AP. And it's not worth the, the bonus strength that he got for four whole attacks. Uh, and only being able to attach to Mega Knobs. He's just competing with a better unit, and the better unit's going to win almost every time from a competitive standpoint. And he's just too expensive for such a humdrum character that doesn't offer anything. Uh, and to me, Gaz is is also one of the biggest losers from the War Bosses. It's not the worst data sheet, but it's just too many points. Uh, and it's really disappointing when you see the the Primarch level models that other armies have getting these massive buffs or just still being really good. Like the Incarn is really good. Um, all the Primarchs are really good. And then Gaz is effectively like our Primarch and he just doesn't do anything. Even, even when you compare him to Abaddon, who's not even a Primarch, like Gaz just doesn't do anything and it's just kind of meh. So... Uh, losing durability to gain the infantry is a trade-off that feels weird. I just, I don't like it. I'd rather have to walk my ass around the terrain than to be able to go through it. Again, his base is so big that there's going to be times where you're going to struggle to get through the terrain anyway. And, you know, like I said, he's still playable. He still has utility. You can put him on the table and he can do a lot and he'll damage, like he'll increase the damage output of units for sure. I'm just not a fan of the direction they went with him. Uh, and that's it. Upcoming videos. I will be doing a lot of Drukari stuff next week because I'm going to be playing Drukari this week. So if you're interested in my take on Drukari, stay tuned next week for what I've got coming. Uh, we're going to talk about my list preview, which I'll actually do my list preview this week for my first test run of Drukari. And we'll talk about why I'm picking the units I'm picking. Uh, game recaps. So, you know, like Thursday, I'm going to probably get two or three games in, maybe more. Friday, I won't because I've got Saturday Apocalypse, so Friday, I'm going to make sure I spend time with the family. And then stream games, we've got, you know, not this week, but next week, we'll be streaming. And then we're going to have, like, a winners and losers of the characters and stuff. So kind of similar to what we did for War Bosses, we're going to do the same thing for all the Drukari characters. And then upcoming Orc videos, we're going to do a list preview for upcoming games, winners and losers of the Index. So we're going to kind of cover different units in there. And then I've got a general 10th review that I'm working on. But I'm trying to hold off on releasing it because I want to see if they actually release a data slate and fix a lot of the issues that are happening in 10th right now. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those where I don't want it to come off feeling like a rant, but there are some inherent issues. And they're issues that have been an issue for a while, and GW just doesn't seem to want to fix them. But I'll save that kind of ranting interaction for that video i don't want to get off on a tangent now 
Hey, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you to Daniel Bodecker, uh, one of the most handsome Daniels I know. He joined the patrons, and big shout out to the rest of them, Captain Too Tall, the real Donny G, and Lord Wellingstone. And Dan, I will have your t-shirt probably this week or next week. I'm working on the new t-shirts this week with the new logo and design, and I'll get stickers ordered and everything. So uh, bear with me. We will get that to you as soon as possible. Thank you, buddy. And links are on the screen, and they'll be in the description as always. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening.